Gary Cohn announcing he's leaving the White House, possibly leaving the West Wing in about three weeks' time. He put out a statement a bit earlier today. Here is in part of what it read. It's been an honor to serve my country and enact pro-growth economic policies to benefit the American people, in particular the passage of historic tax reform. I'm grateful to the president for giving me this opportunity and wish him and the administration great success in the future. On the heels of that, we have a statement from the president as well. That reads the following. Gary has been my chief economic advisor and did a superb job in driving our agenda, helping to deliver historic tax cuts and reforms and unleashing the American economy once again. He is a rare talent and I thank him for his dedicated service to the American people. All that news breaking just about one hour ago. Let's bring in our panel, Michael Needham, Chief Executive Officer at Heritage America, uh, Heritage Action for America, Amy Walter, National Editor of Cook, the Cook Political Report, and Eli Lake, Columnist for Bloomberg View. Well, good evening. Uh, we had a different topic prepared for you, <laughs> but this is the topic of the hour, let's say. Michael, your reaction. It's interesting. I mean, it's something that's been talked about as potentially happening for, you know, many, many months, yet it was still surprising when it happened today. Uh, Gary Cohn has uh, been somebody who's assembled a fantastic team inside the White House. They've had tremendous accomplishments on behalf of the president. You look at the tax cut, which was historic, the re regulatory rollback. Today, the Senate is moving forward with the rollback of Dodd-Frank, getting at that uh, bill which attacks uh, America's equity markets. And so Gary Cohn has been there at the president's side with a remarkable uh, record of economic success. Success, it's important for the president to continue doing that and not roll that back uh, with things like tariffs or some of the other policies that we've seen talked about in recent uh, days. I, I believe they had a good relationship. It's, it appeared to be that way, but he drew the line on tariffs, Amy. Well, Gary he, Cohn did. Yes, he seemed to draw the line on a number of things. He was upset um, about the pulling out of the Paris Accords initially. He was not a big fan of that. And then, of course, there was a very dramatic break with the president on the president's reaction to the violence in Charlottesville, with Cohen saying out loud, I was thinking about resigning. I'd actually penned a letter of resignation, but I'm going to stick with this administration. But I disagree with the way that the president reacted to it, saying there's violence on both sides. And that now, obviously, we've known for a long time that the tariff issue was one that divided the president's economic team. He's been on the side of arguing against more tariffs or any tariffs at all. So that's not particularly surprising to see that he's on the other side of it. I agree that it's surprising that it was today, but I think we all sort of knew that whoever won the war on tariffs was ultimately going to stay in and who lost was ultimately going to leave. It appeared that Gary Cohn came from, let's say, uh, the left side of the aisle when it came to politics. But Gary Cohn is siding with Republicans on the Hill on this whole tariff issue. And that's driving this wedge now between Republicans in Congress and the president who says, I ran on this. And they expect me to do this, Eli. The president ran a lot of things that he didn't do. It doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it's a good thing that we're going to be apparently embracing an economic policy from 100 years ago, which I think is going to be bad for the constituency that Trump claims to represent, this forgotten man. A lot of their prices are going to go up. And, you know, Gary Cohn comes from Goldman Sachs. That is uh, something that is, you know, in some ways both left and right and neither left nor right. And it represents the center of American politics. Um, this is a significant blow, and in some ways, I think it does show a kind of fracture of American politics in a deep way. And the fact that so many Republicans in Congress, and a lot of Democrats too in Congress, are really uncomfortable with the tariff policy, and we'll see how far yeah. it can go. But the president has a lot of authority here. Uh, the uh, West Wing itself, if you look back over the last 13 and a half months, let's say, just on screen, we'll put the numbers and the faces and the names of those who were in the West Wing are now gone. Uh, I count 19 either resigning or fired, uh, 19 in less than 14 months. Uh, this tweet from the president on White House chaos, I think, is interesting, too. It reads the following. The new fake news narrative is that there is chaos in the White House. Wrong. People will always come and go, and I want strong dialogue before making a final decision. I still have some people that I want to change, always seeking perfection. There is no chaos, only great energy. Michael. 
Well, it certainly feels pretty chaotic today. I mean, I think if you look over the last 14 months, it's been a White House that has stormed, and then it's come together and normed, and then it's stormed again and normed again. Obviously, it works better when, when the team is working together. And, and frankly, Washington needs strong executive leadership. Congress, 535 people, all of whom have different ambitions and different um, uh, things that they're worried about, needs an executive branch that is sitting there saying, this is what the team is doing, let's go forward. Uh, the chaos doesn't help with that, but we've seen this in the past, and uh, I'm sure that the White House will come back together and, and start well, operating in a more said, normal fashion. What he said today is if people leave, I got plenty of people who can come right through the door. And he said that we have plenty of talented people who want to work here at the White House, Amy. Well, we're going to see who takes the place uh, of the National Economic Advisor. But look, I think that the chaos is part of the strategy. It's not a bug in the system. It is the system. This is where the president feels the most comfortable being in a situation where it looks as if there is no order and he seems to be the most comfortable in that. But a lot of people, that is not how they like to work. And it is also a very difficult way to push strategy. All Republicans on the Hill want to talk about right now, tax cuts and the economy, mm. period. They don't want to talk about tariffs. They don't want to have to go off on a lot of these tangents that the president and the White House seem to be unable to focus just on that one strategy. Quickly on chaos in the White House, is it? It's not comparable it to any to modern president. And I think that the number of resignations, the, the fact that it's hard to figure out what the policy is, is its own form of abdication and should worry us all. Mm.